Hi again. This is another short video because it's the same day as the last week. I'm recording two videos on the same day and my throat is a little bit itchy. This time I will talk about some of my favorite SWS and RIA pack extensions. I will leave a link in the description so you know how to install it and get them as soon as this video is done. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juan Chis and let's get into it. I want to show you the RE Spectrum, Spectrum Analyzer, Category RE Spectrum, and Justin Johnson. You, you will find all of the names of the packages in the description of the video. And the way I usually like to set up this kind of metering, just to have some extra visual information whenever I need it, for this kind of effects, I like to go into the FX search and change the default settings to show embedded UI visual interface or user interface in the mixer control panel. That way, whenever I add it, for example, to the drums channel and I close the window, it's still going to show up in there. So what I'm trying to see in there to have some extra information is I change the spectrum into full usually for most situations, unless I'm on the master channel, I use it as full. The display is fill. The range is just as it is. The tilt, I leave it at 4.5. The window, I leave it just as it is. But I do change the FFT size to 1496. The higher the number, the more peaks you will see because it's subdividing more and more from 20 to 20K. So this usually works really good for most situations. For example, if I have it right here and I want to more or less know what's the usage of space, if I have some bad monitoring at hand, my drum, my bass and my keys. And this can be useful, just get a general reference of what's going on. I wouldn't have it all of the time, but sometimes for teaching mixing, this has been useful for my students to more or less understand where all of the instruments are living, living and why does this work. If I'm having it inside the master channel, what I would do different is to change the spectrum into mid plus side. Because I don't agree with the whole situation of just cleaning up the low end in the sides, but I have to know if the side is overwhelming in regards of the mid, because that doesn't usually work as well as people think. On headphones, it might feel funky, but it doesn't translate well on other systems usually. So that's the only different thing that I will place. The second one will be the smart trim left and right. I have this section set to my keyboard right next to the Z. I really like this action because, for example, I can be working, for example, in this media item and I have it selected and I just hit that button and it cuts all the way there or it recovers all the way back there. And if I hit the right one, it goes all the way there or it recovers all the way there. It's a really fast way to recover and edit things if you're cleaning up the sites instead of just going like this and trying to clean up and then erasing the other things. I feel like this is a lot, a lot faster. Within the piano roll, we have little chord box and I haven't messed around enough with the piano roll in Reaper because it's strange for me still. But what you can do, I will also leave, leave a link in the description of the video so you know how to install it because it has like a small couple of steps to it. But what it activates, because it runs as a script, you can create from the chords that you have right here. You can export chords as project regions, project markers, stake markers, text events, notation events. And this is really useful because some of us aren't as great listeners for music making as others. So maybe you want to add this as take markers. So whenever you go back into this, you will always see chords that you are dealing with. And that's extremely useful for me. Or I can export them as a chord track that it only makes it like this. I don't think that's way too useful, but maybe project regions can be useful if you want to use one of the levels of your regions like so. Another fun thing about this is that you can select all of the MIDI notes that you're playing and it shows you the chord that you're playing right up here. And that's useful for people that are still struggling with music theory and are still learning. I, I find it useful. So yeah, little chord box. Whenever I'm doing some parallel processing, more often than not, I find myself trying to rename tracks in a useful way. 
So for example, I might name this parallel drums because it's a parallel compression, but rename selected tracks as first effects has helped me a lot because sometimes I want to name my reverb channel as a plugin that I'm using for that reverb. So right click it and I edited the menu. You can look at that in my past video. So I can have rename selected tracks as first effects.lua. That way, if this track has no name and I run this action, it instantly names to TSAR, blah, 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 blah. And that's really useful. There are a couple of more actions, but they are stock actions, not SWS and Reapack extensions. So this is just another short video. I promise uh, I will come back with my full in-depth videos as usual. If you like these kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and do all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.